By now it should come as no surprise that some of the most amazing guitars in the world come from Japan. When you've got high-end Japanese brands like ESP, Ibanez, and Comparison, to name a few, clearly there's no shortage of cool Japanese guitars. But what may be quite startling for my fellow Americans is that the coolest Japanese guitars Japan keeps for themselves. Yes, there's a whole slew of Japanese domestic market only guitars and they are just incredible. Let's look at a few examples. Here's one of the signature guitars from the Japanese guitarist Shu from the band Galnarius. How many frets does that thing have? I don't know, I can't count that high. Here's another one, this time with a diamond plate top. And look at this, here's one that looks like it's been shot full of holes. And of course, who can forget that classic ESP M2 with a picture of OJ Simpson on it? I mean, if that's not going to haunt your dreams, I don't know what will. Just taking a look at the Japanese version of the ESP website reveals some pretty heart-stopping designs. Okay guys, but today there's one Japanese guitar in particular that I have with me that I want to show you guys. And that is this guitar right here. This pinnacle of six-string beauty is called the Edwards ECY165CTM. Now I know that's not the catchiest name, but just look at this thing. It's a mahogany body with a quilt maple top, a Floyd Rose, Seymour Duncan pickups, an ebony fretboard with 27 frets, and it's a multi piece walnut and maple neck through. Now again, the brand of this guitar is Edwards. And it's actually kind of cool. If you turn the logo upside down, it says Spjumpa. I had a real problem with Spajempa when I was a teenager. But actually, Edwards is really only a brand that is sold in Japan. It's part of the overall ESP brand, but it's sort of a Japanese domestic sub-brand. Now guys, this guitar is beautiful, but it's actually very special to me beyond just being a cool guitar. This guitar is one of my most prized possessions. It's right up there with my Sega Dreamcast, my collection of first edition Tom Swift books, my Lucky Lindbergh coin, and of course, my can of Bang Radical Skedaddle. Now, the reason that this guitar means so much to me is because I have a special history with this guitar. Way back when I first met my wife, back at that Iron Maiden concert that her older brother invited me to, way back then, I had this guitar, and it was one of my favorite guitars that I had. Well, a couple of years went by, and as things happened, I decided to propose to her. But being the typical musician that I was, I was pretty short on cash. And so I sold this guitar to help pay for her engagement ring. So I lost a guitar, but I gained a wife. And in the back of my mind, I thought, well, man, maybe someday you'll be successful enough that you can just buy that guitar again and it won't be a big deal. And it actually worked out even better because the one I had before had some pretty nasty dings around the body and this one even though it's a used guitar, it's just in like perfect condition. And so now I have the guitar and the wife. And what's really cool is back in the day, I actually took some pictures of her and I together and with this guitar. So now that I have the guitar again, I, I should probably take some updated pictures. Plus, I've, you know, I have a different hairstyle now. All right, guys, so that is my heartfelt story about this guitar just in time for Valentine's Day. But I want to go ahead and get into the actual review and demo of this guitar because it is really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my Fender GTX 100 amplifier. I'll go through a few different presets in there so we can get a few different tones from the guitar. And then after that, we'll talk a little bit more about this guitar and how it is to play it. Now, real quick, guys, if you enjoy videos like this, checking out cool guitars, and you have not already subscribed, please consider subscribing right now. Okay, let's plug this in and check it out.
Okay guys, so something about this guitar that I want to point out that is just sort of mind-blowing is the fact that uh, the Edwards brand is considered sort of like a mid-range brand. By Japanese standards, this is not even like a high-end guitar. This is sort of like an average guitar. And that's just ridiculous when you look at this thing and you look at the specs. I mean, it's mahogany and maple and walnut and ebony, high-end materials, high-end hardware, and the design is just amazing. Now let's talk about the fact that there's 27 frets on this guitar. At first glance, you might think that that's just sort of gimmicky, but the cutaway down here, it, it goes up past the 24th fret. It goes up to about maybe the 25th fret, and these frets are so close together that it's actually very easy to reach up and grab those super high frets. So they're still totally usable on this guitar. Also, the fretboard has a classic Vine inlay on it. It's a little bit along the lines of like the Steve Vai guitar, but it's still, uh, you know, it's different. It's still doing its own thing. And it's got this amazing abalone binding around the body, even on the fretboard and then up onto the headstock. Some people think that stuff is a bit much, but I love how it looks, and I think on this guitar, it just looks incredible. Now, this guitar is a great guitar to play. Again, the fret access is really, really good on it. It's a very, very comfortable neck. It has a satin finish on the back of the neck, and they've done it, you know, they've done it carefully because it's a gloss finish on the body, but then the gloss finish stops right here on the neck joint, and then it's just a satin finish all the way up. It's got big extra jumbo frets all the way up to the 27th fret, and the frets are finished really, really nicely. The, the ends and the crowning and everything is nice. Now, I don't know if I would say this is my absolute favorite guitar because there's maybe certain situations that other guitars might be better suited for, but this is definitely really high on my list of guitars that I own. Now, one thing that's really kind of tragic is that I believe this model has been discontinued. I don't think they make these guitars anymore. And you can actually find them in a variety of different colors. They have a natural one, they've got a blue one, I think even a uh, like an orange burst. And there are a few other models that are similar, like with bolt-on necks, there are a little bit more uh, stripped down versions of these guitars. Now I'll put some links for some of these in the video description below, but again, keep in mind, you're probably not gonna be able to find one in the US. Uh, I can really only ever find these guitars for sale in Japan. But guys, as always, I would love to hear what you think of this guitar in the comments section below. And also, what do you think about those other Japanese guitars that I was showing you at the beginning of the video. Okay, so I'm going to put links for everything I was talking about in the video in the video description below. I will have links down there for my social media and my instructional material and also the backing track channel that I got that backing track from. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.